So Google is a pretty valuable source of information for marketing, collaboration, and basically being really nosy. But did you know that they are busy crawling your source code as much as your web pages? Here to tell us about it is Chris DeBona, Google's open source program manager. Thanks. Thanks, Chris. I, I like the intro. So if you're nosy, here's a person to talk to. Uh, it, how many of you surf your name? It's like, um, I'm, I'm full of my ego, yes. Um, anyway, uh, <laughs> hi. Uh, I know a lot of you. It's good to see you again. And for those of you who I don't know, hi. Um, so what is this? This is, this is my little talk about actually your work in open source. And by your, I mean the world's, right? Um, I think people tend to forget just how much open source there is. And so we decided over the last couple of years to start measuring it. You know, this is something we do at Google. We measure things a lot. We take statistics and data and crawl it all and bring it in and do stuff with it. So I was like, well, you know, we've been doing this stuff. Let's, let's share it with people and, and let them know just how amazing open source is, which is it's sort of preaching to the choir, but it's not. And you'll see why. So where did I get all this data? Uh, we, we crawled the internet. We do it a lot. Um, a couple years back, we started crawling the internet for source code. And as part of that crawl, we classify software by license, by language, and the rest. Um, so the corpus that we, we've come up with is about 30 million unique files, meaning we don't look at the files more than once, um, even if it happens to be in multiple projects, multiple forks, and the rest. Processed about 2.5 billion lines of code. This is not to say this is all the open source code, but this is a minimum. Right. So there's at least two and a half billion lines of code out there for you to use. It's sort of the short message. If, so if you have to leave now, just go. You, people standing in the back, you can go. It's okay. No, no, seriously, sit, join. Um, and then I looked uh, as sort of a way of doing gut checks on the data. I looked at known hosts, code.google.com, with about 20, 225,000 projects, 200,000 projects. Uh, not all active, of course. Uh, there's a smaller subset of those that are actually seven-day active. And then looked at some SourceForge.net data. And then I had a good gut check yesterday when I saw the Olo guys uh, at the bar with whiskey sours. I was the one with the whiskey sours. I don't remember what they were drinking. Uh, are the Olo guys in the room? Cool, I can totally make fun of them. Um, they were loaded. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> so, so how trustworthy is this data? So a crawl is a funny thing, right? When you crawl the internet, you're getting a lot of data that isn't what you think it is. And so uh, there is a certain amount of error in these numbers, but one of the ways we approach this problem is we, we make it up in volume, right? Um, <laughs> so, which I think is like one of the sins of statistics, right? But, um, but it's a venal sin, not a mortal sin. Uh, and also, if you look at, and the problem with using these sites like code.google.com and, and, and SourceForge for your gut check is that the tastes and standards of those sites uh, changes how you appreciate the data. So for instance, uh, code.google.com only allows a subset of the OSI license list. Um, and, and then when you look at GitHub, it has a lot of forks, but forks without additional work or with small amounts of additional work aren't the same. And when you look at something like Android, which we released in October, uh, in the middle of all this, you know, we released three mirrors of the same code base. We've done three code drops, you know, literally hundreds of millions of lines of code, but it's really about, about a gigabyte of code, right, that's been replicated a couple of times. And then other people have forked Android to make their stuff. And, and so you get in the situation where how can you be sure? And so sometimes you can't be. But for the most part, this is good data. So uh, let's start with code.google.com. Code.google.com, if you break down the licenses, uh, you see something really interesting starting to happen with GPL v2 and v3. Uh, we don't allow the AGPL on code.google.com, though, so how good is this data really if you really care about that license? Or if you're really uh, very much into the NASA open source license? Well, we don't have any of that because we don't allow the license on the site. Um, so maybe somebody who really loves the NASA open source license is lying and saying they're Mozilla, right? So, so you have this problem where if you trust any one site, you're not getting the full picture. So what happens when you look at the whole internet? Well, unfortunately, our, our, our logic for recognizing GPL v2 and v3 wasn't in place when we started the study, right? So I, I did a special study just around v2 and v3 adoption. But this is the same slide. You know, Dirk and, and other folks out there, they've seen this slide before. That pie 
on the right-hand side has stayed about the same for about 12 years. This is the 47% the of the world is GPL pi, right? Um, and about 20 to 22% is LGPL, and then the, la the remaining is permissive licenses or per file licenses like the MPL. But for the most part, uh, the green, the purple, and the blue, um, I think I have a laser pointer, but who knows. Um, those are your super permissive licenses, your Apaches, your MITs, and your BSDs. And what this means is if you're in a paranoid environment where you're not allowed to touch the GPL or the LGPL, considering how much unique open source code is out there, there's still some five to 600 million lines of open source code that's just there for you to use. All you have to do is follow the notice requirements and you're golden. And that's easy to do. It's hard to screw up Apache, MIT, and BSD. So join us in open source is what that's saying. And then when you get more comfortable, you know, maybe you can dip your toe in the LGPL. Now you're looking at well over a billion plus lines of code out there for you to use. And then if you can even get comfortable with the GPL, there's another billion plus. So I mean, this is remarkable. So any one of you, anyone in this room, if you get good at incorporating open source in your projects and in your code, you're equal to all of you plus all the developers of Google plus, 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 plus. Because you can have all this code and operate from it. Of course, Google does too, right? So we're not stupid. But, you know, it's there for you. And this is a very powerful thing, right? None of you are alone anymore, right? You're an army, even though you're just one person. So that's pretty awesome. And this is my eye chart. So forgive me for this. But what you're looking at here is really, really interesting. We said, OK, well, we had data from 2008 about the same time. And then we also have data from 2009. We did it right around OSCOM. So what's happened over time when you look at those percentages? And, and you find some really interesting things. GPL hasn't substantively changed. I think it was literally 0.1% uh, change, where they had a little bit more. Um, and that's actually within the boundaries of error, in my opinion. Um, the LGPL, however, took a really big hit, and it basically gave it over to Apache, right? So people are saying, listen, I'm either a GPL person or I'm a permissive license person. This LGPL thing, it's too in between E for me, right? That's what that tells me, but I could be reading my motivations into it. You can read your own. Um, you're seeing a rise of the Apache license, which is something I'm very happy about because I think it's a good license. And BSD is dipping down a little bit. Uh, MIT is growing, though. MIT, this is, may even be re reflective of MIT's, uh, the universities. Uh, they've been open sourcing a lot of it last year. But I don't really know where the extra comes from, but it does come from somewhere. And then I include the little ones just to show you that I could, because I had a charting program and I had to use it. Um, this is a really important slide. How many of you uh, have software under the GPL v3? Raise your hand. OK, thank you. Um, so what's funny about this, this is a really, really powerful slide. The GPLv3 was only approved a little over a year ago, okay? And on code.google.com, we have seen nearly half of the projects that categorize themselves as GPL go to version 3, including new projects. I mean, this is a huge deal. This, is, this should knock you over with a feather, if that makes sense at all. I mean, this is amazing, you know? No one thought, I mean, we all thought the GPLv3 was gonna matter, but this is insane. This is great for the GPLv3, and bad if you don't like the GPLv3, but this is amazing, right? This is really, really important, and so we'll just look at that. No, all right. Um, <laughs> now, at the same time, how did the AGPL do over the last year? It didn't see GPLv3 growth numbers by any measure. It's still very much a small, um, license from an adoption standpoint. It went from about 15,404 unique files to 50,000, so about three times as much, a little over three times. But this is still 0.17% of all the code we can find under open source licenses on the internet. So, and, and this is up from 0.05%. So this is really important. But the AGPL, it, you know, Launchpad just came out under the AGPL. Every individual project actually moves this bar a bit. Right, because it's so small still. So it's still, in a lot of ways, an emerging license. So what changes any of these numbers? You, right? So you've heard this at every OSCON. But I still have five minutes. What am I going to talk about? Well, I'll tell you, because I'm talking about it. Um, <laughs> we didn't just look at licenses. We looked at languages. I thought it would be really, really fun to quiz you. So in the world of open source, 
Has there been more Perl or PHP released? Raise your hand if you think it's Perl. Thanks for raising the lights. Okay, put your hands down. Raise your hand if you think it's PHP. The PHP people are right. Um, there's more than 37 million more lines of PHP than Perl. So congratulations, PHP, whatever. Or you're less concise than you need to be, I, Perl. I, <laughs> I'm just picturing, like, wait a second, what can you do with regex in Perl? Is that 37 million lines? Maybe. You know? uh, Larry Wallace here. I'm sure we can make a really great joke about conciseness and comic characters swearing at each other. Um, what's that? APL is not a license. APL is not a license. Well, yeah, it's not, but it is. Um, so in the world of open source, has there been more trough or Ruby written? Raise your hand if you think it's Ruby. You guys are counter-programming against me. Uh, raise your hand if you think it's trough. It's actually trough. Almost twice as much. Uh, Ada or ActionScript? Who thinks Ada? Raise your hand. OK, who thinks ActionScript, which is the flashy stuff? Actually, it's Ada by about 4 million lines of code. There's actually not a lot of either. There's very little open source ActionScript. It wouldn't take a lot to beat those Ada bastards, you know? <laughs> Uh, okay, C or C++, this is substantive, ooh, C++, it's very big and complicated, but C, it's so popular, the history, so who goes for history, who goes for C? Who goes for C++? Actually, it's C. There's nearly two lines of code in C for every line of C++, no matter how many vectors you might use. And I think this is the last one I have here. Uh, <laughs> has there been more Fortran or Pascal? Yes, plenty, actually, plenty, so. Okay, Fortran, raise your hand. Fortran was a scientific language. Uh, and then Pascal? It was actually Pascal. And still, almost twice as much as Ruby. Uh, <laughs> I'm being mean against Ruby. Okay, so finally, has there been more Smalltalk or Objective-C? Smalltalk, raise your hand. Okay, Objective-C? Smalltalk. Nearly three times as much. And still more than Ruby. Uh, <laughs> everyone's like, what are you, why are you hating on the Ruby? I'm not. It's just its adoption has been very recent. And actually, history really matters. There's almost, literally, I kid you not, there's almost, I think, 30 times as much C code that has been open sourced than Ruby code. And, you know, there's almost, I think, 15 times as much C++ than Ruby. I mean, it's a new language, so it's not. That said, there's almost like five times as much Ruby than MATLAB. So, okay, let me do a little study. Uh, MATLAB or Mathematica? Mathematica, raise your hand. Okay, MATLAB. It's actually Mathematica by almost three times as much. And I was like, oh, my favorite language has been crushed. Um, so yeah, so that's it. I just wanted to have a little bit of fun up here. So thank you for indulging me. Follow me on Twitter. I love Twitter. Um, or email me if you have any questions. And I'll see you at my session. We can talk more about this in between important topics. Thank you.